name is Kellyanne, and I want to talk about people pleasing. And I'm recording via Zoom <laughs> all by myself in this room because my phone was destroyed, um, eaten by this very handsome man. And uh, I, I just, I had this coming to my brain and I really felt like I needed to get it out there. And people pleasing is the thing that like brought a lot of people to me when I started talking about it. Um, but I don't feel good about uh, talking about people pleasing using the term people pleaser because it is dishonest. It's not just that you're trying to people please. It's not trying to make other people feel good. It's feeling like you can only earn love and earn attention and earn maybe even respect if you are making the other people around you happy. And that's what you're focusing on. And other people's happiness will equal your happiness because they're you, what you, what you give is what you get and, you know, reciprocity and people will appreciate me, AKA show me love when I please them, when I say yes to things, even though I really need to say no, because I don't really have the energy when I do things for other people that they didn't ask for because I'm making an assumption about what would make them feel good and I'm just trying to surround them with love so that they'll maybe, they'll give me some love in return. Maybe you don't know people pleasing on this level yet. Maybe you don't see people pleasing as a problem. Maybe you haven't really gotten to this stage of like, oh, whoa, whew, that's what people pleasing actually is. Um, but if you are here and you're watching this, then you at least need to hear the next part of what I'm gonna say, which is that a better way of saying I'm a people pleaser is saying I don't really respect myself, which is why we say people pleaser because it sounds so much better, but it's totally dishonest because it's not just about pleasing other people. It's about not having enough uh, respect and love for yourself that you don't have to give of yourself if it doesn't feel good, if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel well boundaried, if it doesn't feel reciprocal, if it doesn't feel compassionate and compassionate in a give and take way of like, I see that you're hurting and you're struggling right now. Can I help you do something about that? I see you're hurting and struggling now. I have the energy and I would love to come and help you do something about it. the give and take of I see you being a human in the world and I love you just the way you are and I'm here to support you whenever you need so long as all of my needs are met okay that's what self-respect looks like and that's what respect in relationships is like but people pleaser <sighs> we say it because it's just so much easier to see it as the symptom rather than as the core problem. We like to treat symptoms in this world, in this country. <laughs> we like to just uh, uh, focus on the surface layer, on the superficial, so that we can, uh, you know, just like put a little effort into scrubbing off those top layers, you know, a little exfoliator, and we're good to go and we just keep rolling, as opposed to getting to the core feeling the heat there, feeling the chaos there, feeling the need for change from that place. And then rising up and, I mean, I'm thinking of it volcanically. Like you're just standing on the outside and taking pictures and going, wow, it's hot. Instead of really getting in there, letting yourself be transformed by the knowing that I don't respect and love myself enough in my own relationship with myself. And that is why I show up in my relationships with other people the way that I do. It is not getting to the core of that thing and allowing, wow, I don't actually show myself enough respect and show myself enough love. Allowing that to transform you 
so that you can rise back up Phoenix from the ashes. I mean, I'm mixing my metaphors here, but Phoenix from the ashes coming back out and, and kind of like a lava flow, like allowing what you know and the need for change and like that passionate, almost like, you know, a uh, justified rage that you might feel around like how you got here and why this happened, <laughs> you know, how, how it got this far, um, allowing that to propel you into transforming the landscape of your whole surroundings, your whole life, via all of your relationships, via the way that you allow other people to speak to you, via the way that you speak to yourself. Mm. And it just like really occurred to me that, you know, people want to hear more about people pleasing and more about how to like get out of it. But we're also in a position in the position of people pleaser because we've been avoiding making significant visible changes. And that's what keeps us in the pattern of people pleasing. It's like not wanting to change so radically that we lose the people that are around us in our lives. But that's also a recognition that we're actually aware of just how fragile our relationships are if we think that starting to say no more to somebody or set boundaries with somebody would break that relationship. We're really revealing to ourselves what we think of our relationships by choosing to remain people pleasers and choosing to uh, adopt the language of um, uh, sort of like pop Thera speak, um, you know, like it, it's just my trauma that makes me, you know, love people this way or show up this way. And uh, letting people pleaser be kind of the identity, the mask to put on of like, well, this is, this is how I am. This is how it is. I just let people walk all over me and I'm, and I get done and fed up with it like every so often. Um, but usually when I blow up, somebody's there to pacify me or I just get like desperate enough to be seen at some point to reach out to somebody from my past that I haven't pleased in a while. I find a way to please them. They reciprocate for like a hot minute. And then it, I, I get that like little tiny grain, that little, the little sprinkle on the whole cookie that should be this good feeling that I have in my relationships. I like get the sprinkle, little sprinkle that I need. I go, oh, that was sweet. Okay, I'm satisfied. People who identify with people pleasing and being a people pleaser are essentially starving themselves of the sweetness that they deserve and the loving respect that they deserve. And it's by virtue of not reaching into the core and pulling out this understanding that it's not just that uh, my childhood taught me I was unsafe and unloved unless I was doing something productive. It is reaching down and realizing that's the, that's the nature of this culture. White supremacy loves that there are so many people pleasing it because it, because it, then it upholds capitalism and we're just giving and giving and pleasing and pleasing and producing and producing and masking our displeasure and also um, denying ourselves pleasure, denying ourselves pleasure of the pleasure of the whole cookie as opposed to just a sprinkle here and there because we don't feel like we deserve any more than that. The video felt important to me because um, not only did I uh, just kind of had it ooh, like brain blast me, <laughs> um, but also I 
uh, I want to get better at respecting myself uh, by being unflinchingly honest. I flinch a lot at honesty. And it's because I was a people pleaser. And in my recovery, I had to, uh, like, uh, during my people pleasing era, um, I was flinching a lot. So during my recovery, I had to learn what my flinching looked like. And when you flinch at being honest, when you flinch at a truth becoming known to you and your own recognition and acknowledgement of it, when you flinch, it is a non-acceptance of that acknowledgement, a non-acceptance of that new understanding that that truth that's kind of upon you now and I hmm, I'm a very uh inclusivity and acceptance is very important to me and I don't feel like I've been uh accepting of myself and inclusive of all of the parts of me that feel a multitude of ways when I have flinched at the hard truths, the, um, the truths that hurt, like Lizzo said. I wish, oh my gosh, and now I'm just realizing there's a, uh, a volcano on the screen there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but volcano on the screen. Hmm. But I had to show you because uh, I think signs matter. I think signs and synchronicities matter. Um, yeah, this felt important to me because, oh, and our water's done. The worst part about being a people pleaser is how often you flinch. How often you flinch at respecting the knowing when it comes to you that's what I feel like it is when when you when truth hits you just this knowing capital k knowing that you go whoa that things would have to change I would have to say something about that if I were to live if I were to eat the whole cookie and really get the goodness out of my life suck the goodness from my life fruit <laughs> If I were to do that, I would have to say something right now. And uh, I'm not used to doing that. So I am going to flinch. I am going to fight, fly, freeze, or fawn. Just pretend it doesn't exist. And usually the freeze and the fawn are the two that people pleasers uh, tend to do quite a lot. But yeah, thinking about that today, just recognizing that, um, you know, y'all really just were consuming this people pleasing uh, content from me not too long ago and wondering, how can I take this deeper? How can I take this further? How can I look at this without rose colored glasses on? Full spectrum, full vibrancy, full rainbow of the truth. And uh, I landed on a lack of self-respect. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Please share your thoughts with me in the comments. Um, I mean for this to be a conversation starter. So how does this feel for you? How does this, like when you first heard this, how did it sit in your body that uh, people pleasing is a lack of self-respect? Was it kind of like, a little bit of a relief because you're like oh wow there it is <laughs> or was there a little bit of like ah, like fight in you like that's not resistance was there any resistance was there any relief and release how did it feel for you let me know i'd love to hear from you and not just be like a person uh speaking into a screen uh you know just wanting to be loved um not just a person speaking into a screen and hoping that y'all are listening. I want to talk. I want to talk. I want to connect. 
I am not flinching at the cringe <laughs> of just saying what I want and telling you, give it to me. Give it to me. Give me your comments. Whatever you have to say about this, we'll love to hear it. And I love you so much. You're deserving of all the love you desire. And I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful rest of your day. Uh, see you.